afternoon, everyone. It's 2 o'clock on the East Coast, 11 out west on Wednesday, and it's time for Freedom Watch, streaming from the highly acclaimed Strategy Room on FoxNews.com. I'm Judge Andrew Napolitano, your host of Freedom Watch. We'll discuss the issues that profoundly affect your freedom, your civil liberties, your financial liberties, and your right to have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution. We encourage you to take part in today's show and in every show of Freedom Watch. After all, this is a show of the people, by the people, for the people. Your input will continue to determine our guests, our topics, and even my questions. Send your tweets to Shelley Roche from BreakTheMatrix.com. I'll read those tweets during the show. And Shelley will join us, as she always does, with more of your comments toward the end of the program. You can also send your emails to strategyroom at foxnews.com. And now you can also view this and future episodes of Freedom Watch on foxnews.com slash strategyroom. We have an incredible opportunity to show the power and influence of Freedom Watch. Tune into the Fox News Channel for a live simulcast of Freedom Watch and listen simultaneously as we make a live appearance on Fox News at about 40 after the hour. We have a wonderful lineup of guests and topics for today's show. Right now, it is my great personal pleasure and privilege to introduce two of the great defenders of freedom and liberty in the world today. Congressman Ron Paul joins us from the halls of Congress, from the Capitol building itself, and Mr. Daniel Hannan, a conservative member of the European Parliament, is live with us from Brussels. Gentlemen, welcome to Freedom Watch. Thank you. Good Congressman you. Paul, we'll start with you. Uh, since last we met, the economic news, as it always does, seems to get worse and worse. This week, we have the prospect of General Motors asking the government to own 50% of it, and Chrysler asking the government to own 50% of it. And since we met last week, we learned that the president of Bank of America was forced to buy Merrill Lynch at $17 billion less than he knew it was worth, yeah, because the government said, we'll fire you if we don't come across with this deal. What can we do to slow what appears to be an inevitable march okay, what are we toward about? the nationalization of banks and businesses in America by the federal government. Well, yep. I don't anticipate in the next uh, day or two or a week or two that we're going to be able to slow it up in any way whatsoever. Uh, there, it's just marching on, and it's very difficult because uh, this is what the, uh, the, the people wa seem to want. I, on the House floor, I describe oh, this you. as socialism without a whimper. I mean, okay, people fantastic. That's good. Are just, they're you. begging for it. I'm having a lot of feedback, by the way. <laughs> I can't it's my pleasure. Go ahead. All right, you can, we can hear you loud and clear, uh, Congressman yeah, Paul. Well, I, I, I could hear myself, too. Okay. They're, they're, they're going to fix that for you in just a moment, and, and I apologize to you. And, and I think your description is a great one. We start out with a form of fascism, simply private ownership, government control. You own your own bank, but we're going to tell you what to do, and if you don't do this, we'll find a way to dislodge you or to remove your salary consistently. Now we find what you call socialism without a whimper. Here's the question. Why is it without a whimper? Well, I think big business and banks have learned to live with the government. Banking industry is so, sort of a, uh, an, a branch of government, and businesses now have learned to live with it, too. And, and it's so discouraging and so disgusting to see these champions of capitalism, uh, so-called, come begging on their knees to be bailed out. No, and now they've got their bailout. Now they want to be owned. Uh, so it, it, they've lost their way totally and completely. They don't understand what free markets are all about. And they've lived too long with government. And uh, this thing is going to come to an end. They're not going to be able to keep it together without total ownership and total socialization. Hopefully, the American people wait, wake up. You can't sit back and say, oh, the people in Congress are going to wake up. They're not going to wake up until the people wake up and said, no more. When it collapses, when the dollar collapses, people are going to have an option. Whether or not we're going to pursue this and just keep adding on. On more debt, more spending, and more inflation, or people are going to just get rid of it and say, look, 
let's, let's look to our traditions. Let's look to our constitution. Let's look to our history. And maybe we were on the right track a couple hundred years ago. So far, in the last hundred years at least, we've been on the wrong track and we've been going downhill. And this is the climax of that sli slipping into a fascist state. And hopefully we'll wake up enough people to do something about it. To you in Brussels, thanks very much for joining us. I'm going to take a little personal pride and say maybe this is the first time you two champions of liberty have been together on the same program at the same time. If it's not, I'm glad you're doing it again. And if it is, I'm so thrilled to be part of this. You, of course, burst onto the scene not too long ago when you, uh, when you lectured uh, Prime Minister Gordon Brown with what we in America call just very basic economics 101. And he tried to laugh at you. And history, of course, will prove you right. Your problems, I think, may be worse than ours. There may be a lot more fascism and socialism already occurring on your side of the Atlantic. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Brown proposed this week that your marginal tax rates go up to 50 percent. Is there any effort that can be strong enough to resist that kind of theft and confiscation of property by the government? Mr. Hannon. All right, I guess we're having a couple of technical difficulties, which we'll work on, and we'll eventually get, uh, we'll eventually get the two of you together. Uh, Congressman Paul, back to you while we work on the technical issue with, uh, with Daniel Hannon. Uh, w were you surprised uh, at the ease with which uh, Wall Street held out its hand uh, and asked for, for welfare? Were, were, were those of us who were raised thinking that the captains of industry would defend the free market raised to, to, to believe in a myth rather than reality? Yeah. I wasn't that, I wasn't that much surprised. I, I found it disgusting. But the one thing that I have found, uh, especially over the last couple of years, is that if this country survives, if individual liberty exists, and if we have a market economy, it won't come from the large industrialists. Although there are some that defend the market, free markets are much better defended by the small businessman and individuals, the individuals who come and they're concerned about their personal liberties and they'd like to have their own income and they'd like to just to get the government out of their lives. It won't be big business that'll save us. Well, what can people in the Congress do? I mean, with, with, with Senator uh, Specter's movement over to the Democratic Party, which probably won't change his voting record very much, uh, and with the likely arrival of Al Franken from Minnesota, the Democrats will have the type of majority in the Senate that they already have in the House. Now, we know what they do in the House. They stifle debate. They resist amendments. They barely even allow those of you and us who believe in the free market to present free market alternatives to their socialist and fascist approaches. Should we expect the same thing in the upper house? Yeah, I think so. I mean, with, uh, with Spectre switching over, it just solidifies their, their support. But really, does it make a whole lot of difference? He was voting that way anyway. It has a uh, parliamentary support that they get because they, they can kill the filibuster. But uh, this is a philosophic struggle, and unfortunately, uh, what dominates here is Keynesianism and big government. So that's what we have to repeal. I would suggest, if anybody ever asked me, you know, about what the Republican Party ought to do to not lose uh, individuals, is they probably ought to redefine themselves. Maybe, maybe they could be uh, more constitutional. Maybe they could become more libertarian. <laughs> maybe they could care about civil liberties. Maybe they could have an old right position on foreign policy. I find in, in my uh, small experience uh, that is a very popular issue and it's very popular with young people. That's what I think has to happen for the whole country is to translate these beliefs and liberty to the young people because they are now moving into uh, you know, the responsible positions of either government or journalism or whatever. So I see more hope there, but I don't have much hope for the people that we have here in Washington today. And Judge, I'm sorry, but I'm going to I'm gonna have to call it right we're going to let you go, and I'm happy to end with your, your, little, your little message about hope. Congressman Ron Paul, until next week on Freedom Watch, thanks very much for joining us. Okay. We, we, you. we appreciate your time. Uh, we are still, of course, trying to, uh, to, to bring in Daniel Hannon from Brussels, and maybe we'll have a little success with that before the show is over. Joining me now on the phone 